And I said, I just want to encourage you today. Be yourself. Be who God made you to be. Come on, the world's trying to give us an identity that's not what God's given us. Y'all can say amen anytime you want. Amen. They want to tell us that we were born that way. But you know what? When you get born again, you can be born again the way God designed for you to be. Yes. See, the devil's a liar. Y'all realize that? When I got born again, things changed. And as I walked with God, things continued to change. But you know that the devil doesn't stop. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. And God said, he said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. But all this identity that's getting all messed up where men don't know if they're men or women and women don't know if, they, if they're a man or a woman and all that, that is of the world and that's demonic. Amen. I'm going to just tell you all the truth. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Okay? But God's given you an identity. Amen. And I want you to learn to be who God called you to be. Some of you men need to cut loose and realize that you're a man. And you don't have to bow down to all of these things. It's time for real men that love Jesus Christ to stand up and tell the truth and walk with God in the power of His Spirit. Same thing with you ladies, to stand up and be real women, women that can walk in the power of the Spirit. The sermon I'm going to teach today is Jesus, Lion and Lamb. Say Lion and Lamb. Do you know that we were created in the image and likeness of God? And we see all the way through the scripture that God reveals himself to us as a lamb. But then we find out that he's also a lion. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. The offspring, the seed of David. David was known as a lion. And he was given a scepter by God. And God said this scepter, which is to rule like a lion. And David was a man of war. Do y'all realize that? Come on, y'all can respond to me. It's going to be better if you do that. Amen. See, when you get in the Old Testament and, and you start looking at, at what these men did, this, if we go to Sunday school, and, 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 you know, you're teaching about the, the kids about, you know, David and Goliath. We kind of skip over some of it. Y'all do know that when David slew Goliath, he had some skill sets that he used. He used a, a sling. And then once he knocked him down on the ground, do y'all realize he jumped up on the giant and he took a sword, the giant sword, and started to hack his head off? Uh-oh. That's a lion. Then he hacks the head off, you know, it says, and he picks up his head. Now, this was a giant. This was a young, maybe teenager, later in his teenage years. And he picks up the head, and I, I would imagine there's some stuff dripping off of it. That's not the version we say, it in, 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 you know, in the, the children's ministry and stuff. But that, that's the version you read in the Bible. But then you know what? You know the, the guy that God called that did that was the one that was shepherding the sheep, singing in the middle of the night worship songs and writing worship songs to God more than anybody else. So that lion was also a lamb. He was also gentle. Sacrificial. Amen? Amen? See, when you're a man and you're a lion and it's in your nature to be a lion, when you see something unjust, you want to do something about it. Amen. Amen? Amen? And then when it's time to be gentle, you learn how to be the lamb also. And ladies, I'm not excluding y'all because I'll tell you what, some ladies can be some lionesses. <laughs> Stacy and I went to Africa. The lion, when, when we went on our safari, we did some ministry, but we took a day to go to, on, on safari. We actually got to see a lion and a lioness laying under the tree. And they were not afraid of anything because the jungle to them is a buffet. They're called the what? King of the what? Jungle. They, they, they were not afraid of anything. They weren't afraid of us. They weren't afraid of the jeeps. They weren't afraid of the elk. They weren't afraid of the elephants. 
they were just relaxing in the shade. And then there was a, a few, uh, uh, not deer, what they call antelope, that, that were down. And so it was time for the lion to eat. So the lioness goes after the, the food. He just stayed under the tree. And it's very rare when you go on safari that you actually get to see a chase. And we got to see a chase. And our, our safari driver was freaking out. I was like, wow. I said, we got God's favor. And that lioness took off after that, that little a gazelle or something. It was, and boy, an antelope. And that thing took off running. And boy, and they, they were in a bottom where there's some water. And they were jumping the water. It was beautiful. And she didn't catch him. So she had to go back, and when she went back to the line, we could see all this with our binoculars and clothes. When she went back to the line, the lioness was licking on him, kissing on him. She said, I'm sorry I didn't bring supper home. <laughs> you go, we got it on camera. So, you know, the lion, lioness, very necessary. But gentle. It's very necessary too. And I'm learning this because all of my life, since I was a young man, I had a problem with anger. Anybody else? Have, you don't have to raise your hand, but y'all, can you bear witness? When I got into martial arts and I became a competing martial artist, I wasn't afraid to get in the ring with anybody. I made them afraid because fear will... You, you, if you can get them afraid, you got them. So I knew how to intimidate. I knew how to, you know, when I got in the ring and we'd fight, if they'd hit me, one time they broke my kneecap, kind of knocked it out. I didn't even know till after the fight. It didn't slow me down, but the next few weeks it slowed me down. Because you're so, you're adrenaline, you're, and you're like that lion. You're ready to fight. You're ready to push back on who's pushing back against you. And listen, men as fathers, we're called to be lions. Amen. Whenever somebody's trying to attack our families, we're called to be a lion. You're called to be a protector. But if you don't understand how to be a lamb, you can be like I am sometimes. And I'll be the lion with the very family that I'm with. And I've put my anger and my, that against the ones I'm supposed to be protecting. And it's going to push them away. And I'm learning this. God's teaching me these things. And so I, well, after I got saved, I actually went through some deliverance to get, I uh, had so much anger that I would punch holes in walls when I get mad and stuff. At least I knew where the studs were, though. I, I know enough to, when you're going to punch a wall, you need to know where the stud's at. Y'all know what I'm talking about, guys? I might have been that angry, but once you hit one stud, you're going to learn to, but I had to get, I had to get delivered from that. And I was prayed for. And while I was being prayed for, this thing manifested in me. And they actually cast this thing out of me. I confessed my sin. And, and I fell to the floor like a, a little baby. And I, I got up. And you know what? I didn't punch walls no more. But then as time goes by, the devil doesn't stop. He wants to come back. Amen? Amen? So that's why it says, don't be angry and sin not. Don't give any place for the devil because he'll get back in. A amen? amen? So God wants you to be that lion when you're supposed to be. But God wants you to be the lamb, the sacrifice, the sacrificial one that's going to lay down your life. Like the Bible says, for your wife and for your family and for those around you. There's no greater love than this than a man would lay down his life for his friend. It says to love your wives like Christ loved the church. And how did he love the church? He gave himself for it. So Jesus is the lion and he's the lamb. So if you want to imitate somebody, I'd say imitate Jesus. When was Jesus a lion in, when he was on, the, on earth? Think of the times when he was more like a lion. How about whenever he, he went to the temple and they were selling and he, he it says he... He, he got so upset, he wanted to whip him, and it says he made a whip. He didn't even get one. He, took, he was so mad, he took time to make a whip, and he drove him out, and he overturned the money tables. Now, when somebody starts throwing around your money, doesn't that get you mad? Jesus wasn't afraid of him. 
See, these images of Jesus being this kind of wimpy person, you have no clue. While he was on the cross, he had a whole legion of angels that was under his charge that he could have called for them to come take him off the cross. He said, if I wanted to, I could call my, my people to fight for me. He says, but my kingdom is not of this world. So he's not going to get, it's, it's, the battle is not flesh and blood. But he, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. King of all kings, and he's the commander in chief of all of the heavenly hosts, the armies in heaven and the earthly host. He died once and he'll never suffer again like that. Because he's the lion. And there's going to be justice. Lion means the king. And the scepter of King David, it says, is yours until it comes to the one in whom it belongs. And the scepter, the king forever is Jesus. Go with me to uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 1. So I want to be like Jesus. I'm still striving to be like Jesus. Because I know there's no ladies in here that ever act like lions when they should be lambs. Amen. I don't have my eagle thing up here, but if you've ever seen my big silver uh, statue or whatever you want to call it, it's an eagle over the little eaglets. And that eagle's like this and it's got its claws out and it looks like it'll tear you up. Everybody thinks that might be a male, like a, uh, it's the big old male. It's the female protecting her eaglets. And all of you ladies in the spirit, you are not male nor female. You have authority, you have power, but you have to be sacrificial too. Amen. It's hard to sacrifice. It's a word we don't like to use much. It says, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Let's just stop for a moment. Chapter 4, we come up. Go back to it. I want to talk about the scripture a little bit. Uh, in chapter 4, it's a picture of the throne of God. The, the seven churches is chapters 1, 2, and 3. After 3, chapter 4, it shows us the heavenly picture. And there's worship going on around the throne. And all of a sudden, after everybody's bowing down and worshiping before the throne, the next thing that comes into the scene, the focus goes to the scroll. Now, this, the Greek word for scroll here is the same word we use Bible. I mean, it's, so it's really a book. But their books were not bound like ours. It was on a scroll that would go, you'd roll it up this side, and unroll, you know, you'd read it across, and they had columns to read their scripture. And they would, they would read from uh, right to left instead of left to right. Now, the Greek is different, but the Hebrew was go the other way. So just to let you know. Now, now listen, this, this book or this scroll is in the hand of him that sits on the throne. It's in his right hand. And it's got seven seals. Now, seven is the number of perfection. Amen. Now, I was talking to Stacy about this this morning. But as I was praying over this, thinking about it, I said, you know, God created everything in six days and on the seventh he rested. It was complete in seven. Now, I really believe that the focus of what's fixing to take place here is the scroll. There is a whole nother chapter or not just book about what's going to happen to humanity because in the book of Revelation, the revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ revealing who he really is. And here is the next uh, dispensation or the next era of time of what's going to take place when the first heaven and first earth is going to pass away and a new heaven and new earth is going to come. Everything's going to change. The devil's going to be in the lake of fire. Everything. So, so this book is needed to be opened for us to go into this new creation where we're going to live where there's no more tears, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, no more death. There's a whole nother plan that's going to take place and and so the, here's the focus is on what's the next thing that's going to be going on in, in the history of mankind, in this, in, in this creation of God's family. And it's got seven seals on it. Now, the way 
uh, when I studied it, a seal on a scroll would be a, 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 a piece of string wrapped around, tied, and then they would put wax on it so you would know if somebody opened it or not. And if it was opened, the wax would be broken. And they got seven seals on this scroll. And so, so get that picture in your mind. God's got this next whatever that's already written. God's all-knowing. Y'all know that God's not in time. God, God, the omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God is outside of time. He knows from everything from beginning to end. But he didn't loose this thing yet. Because no one was ever found worthy to open it up to bring redemption and salvation to the earth and all those that are in it. Because only a man, I don't want to get too theological with you, y'all kind of stay with me. Only a man or a woman, mankind, that came from the earth, that God gave them dominion over all the works of his hands, amen? amen, had the legal right to do this, to open the scroll, to, to release the next part of humanity. That's why Christmas is coming, because he came out of heaven, became the man that became worthy to be able to take the scroll and do the next thing of what's going to happen in, for eternity. Amen. Now, this is like major what's taking place here. Y'all kind of getting the picture now? Look at the next scripture. And I saw a strong angel. Now, see, when we talk about God's things, there's not no weakling. You remember Sunday school? How many of you ever saw the, the little felt things when you'd put it on? You'd put the little lamb in felt. And they'd have several different versions of Jesus. That Jesus the shepherd. Jesus going to heaven. Jesus walking on water. And you get a picture, the one that said Jesus going to heaven like this, they need to turn them like that, put a cape on the back of them and say Superman. And we get these images and the pictures that they paint. We've been to the Louvre. And, and when you go look at all these pictures, that's, some of them, Paul bet, Jesus looks like he's kind of wimpy. He's tiptoe. It said he walked on the water. He didn't tiptoe on the water. And if you can walk on water, you're pretty bad. Amen. Any of y'all ever tried it? I tried it and I sank right away. Peter tried it. At least he went a little bit and then started going down. I never went down. I just went boom. So we got these images of Jesus and, and heaven and, and the things about God as though he, he's wimpy. Oh, when you read the Old Testament, God is not a wimp. Amen. He's a lion. Amen. He's a master of war. He's all-knowing and all-powerful. And so whenever you're supposed to be a lion and you get loud and strong and you stand for what's righteous... There's power. But when you're supposed to be a lamb and you're acting like a lion, you start harming people. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? Next. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. Next. So I wept. John was heartbroken because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll. See, the scroll has to be read. The words have to be proclaimed. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Holy Spirit was hovering over the darkness, and God said. Do you all realize that this can canonized scripture that we had was always, always was and always will be was written before it was ever put down on paper? That the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. That when they ate the truth, the knowledge of good and evil, it did not take them by surprise. didn't take God by surprise. In fact, Moses is the one who wrote all of, the, all of Genesis and the Pentateuch. And that was way after it was done. God gave him the words to write down. So that they could be read and proclaimed. So this scroll has to be opened. The next phase of what's going to happen with man must be proclaimed and read. And it's going to be, it'll, it'll be created and it'll come to pass, just like God said. The first heaven and first earth will pass away and there will be a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. 
Revelation 21, verse 1. So no one could read it or look at it. Next. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, listen, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root or the, the seed of David, has prevailed, prevailed to open the scroll and to loose the, its seven seals. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The, the, this is the, the story when you go back into uh, Genesis chapter 49. It's going to tell you about Judah being, being prophesied over as the lion. Judah was one of Jacob's son or Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Israel proclaimed before Jacob passed away, same person. He called his 12 sons to him. And when he prophesied over Judah, he said, you are a lion. And he said, and your scepter, your seed is going to be a lion, which is going to be David. Because David is from the line, from the line of uh, Judah. Okay? Your scepter is going to be until it's put, be put into the hands of the one it was designed for, who's the Messiah. And David becomes the lion king. Amen? Sitting on the throne. He's got the scepter. And the lineage of Jesus Christ comes through Judah and through David. So here he is. He says, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and the lucid seals. He did it. He's worthy. He was found worthy to take the scroll and to begin to release the next part of the human life, the human future. Of those that have been born of God, born from above. Next scripture. So he says, so he looked. And I would have thought he would have seen a lion. But it says, and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain. That means a lamb that was killed. I never seen a dead lamb standing up. It made me think about that. He stands in his sacrifice that he did. Because when you, we read the beginning of Revelation, it says he was dead and he's alive forevermore. It says he's the firstborn of the dead. He was the one who died and came back to life. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the one who shed his blood. To redeem mankind. So the lion is the lamb. And the lamb is the lion. Stood as though it had been slain. Having seven horns, that means all authority and power. Horns always mean authority and power. That's for the symbolism. Okay? Seven is perfection. He is perfectly filled with authority and power. Okay? And seven eyes. That means he's all knowing. He sees everything which are the seven spirits of God, which are sent out into all the earth. See, everything that's ever done, God sees. The seven spirits of God means the full counsel of all of God's Holy Spirit. Again, the complete perfection of the Spirit of God. He sees everything. He knows everything. Whenever you have sinned in your past, He was there. If you sin today, He'll be there. If you sin next week, he's going to be there. And what is going to happen? He will put his finger on those things in your life, not to condemn you, but to convict you so that he can set you free. Amen. Some of y'all might have heard this story. Just came, It's not a story what happened to me. When I was a, a, a boy, a younger boy, growing up where I was, I was molested as a boy. And when I was in Guatemala doing some uh, mission work, I had a dream. And in the dream, I dreamed where that happened. It's like it was rehappening. But this time in the dream, Jesus was standing right there watching it. And I woke up sweating. And I'm like, wow. And again, my papa, Melvin Tisdale, was with me. I got him and we prayed and we, he said, let's go eat. We went. To, we found a Burger King in Antigua. Hallelujah. Some American food. And we're sitting in the Burger King. 
got some beautiful volcanoes around us. I tell him the dream. He says, you know, the Lord was with you, but he wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free from that. He laid his hands on me and prayed and I got set free. Right there in Antigua. You know why? God didn't cause it to happen, but whatever happened, God was there. And he knows better than you what happened. And he's not, he didn't see it or know about your sin so he can condemn you or, or be mean to you. He does it because he wants to set you free. Sin isn't the problem. It's our inability to walk in the light as he is in light and fellowship with each other in the light. And let the blood of Jesus continually cleanse us from our sin. Because he said, if we say we have no sin, we make him a liar and we do not know the truth. But if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sin is a serious problem. It separates you from God, but it's not a problem from God. It's a problem for you. And he who covers his sin will not prosper. All of this is right in the scripture. So he's all seeing, all knowing he's the one worthy to take the scroll. And when you start reading the rest of the book of Revelation, it's not about the Antichrist. It's not about the end of the world, even though the end of the world is there and the Antichrist is there. It's about the revelation of the greatness of who Jesus Christ is and who we are as his sons and daughters. It's about the book he gave us that has the, our name written in the book of the Lamb of God, the book that is in heaven. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. It's about this next phase of this next part of our, that we will be forever seeing his grace and unveil itself to us. For by grace you have been saved through faith that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. The wages of sin is what? Death. Eternal separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. For those that believe. You don't work for it. I preached a funeral uh, at, at uh, 10 o'clock yesterday morning for a 27-year-old man that, that died in a car accident. It, it was tragic. It was about, the place was filled. About this many seats were filled with young people between 20 and 35 years old and some older family members and all that. He was one of the best skateboard people in that whole area. And all these young people, girls and boys, would go to the skate park and he would try to mentor them on the skateboard, but he was also helping mentor them with Christ. So here he dies at the pinnacle of his life. And it's hard to explain that. Not, not the drug addict, not the crack addict, not the crazy guy. The guy that, that is being mentored and trying to get more young people to go and be mentored. And they're all sitting there and I get the opportunity to preach the gospel of grace to them. And if nothing else, those that the gospel of grace touched and changed yesterday can be the whole reason that he lived his life. See, God knows so much more than us. Because he's really not dead. His body got broken and his spirit left. Next scripture. And he took and he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So he said, it's time. He finished the rescue mission to the earth. That's what this was. He came, he did what he had to do. He died on the cross. He was the lamb that was slain. His blood was shed. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. He was raised from the dead. So he's a slain lamb that's up now. He's got scars in his hands and his feet and in his side because when he appeared to, to uh, uh, Thomas, Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it. He said, okay, put your hand here and put your hand in my side. Now that you see, believe. But blessed is he who believes and have not seen. He's the lamb, the sacrifice, the propitiation is the big word. The one who took our place on the cross because the flesh could not keep the law. So what he did, he nailed the flesh in himself to the cross. And those who walk in the spirit by faith will have all of his promises working in their lives. Does that mean you're not going to have trouble? 
No, he says, in this world you will have tribulation. The rain, it rains on the just and the unjust. They build their house on the sand or the rock. The rains come, the winds blow, it's still beat on that house. But the one that's built on the rock stands, the one that's built on the sand falls. It doesn't mean you're not going to have storms in your life. And those who pretend that their lives are all perfect and holy and righteous and they never have a problem, never do nothing wrong, they're hiding behind something. Amen. Some kind of, I don't know, it's just, I call it religion. Because you know when Jesus really aligned, when he was talking to the religious people, you're not entering in and you're keeping other people from entering in. You brood of vipers. And you know what they wanted to do? Kill him. When you start acting like a lion, they're going to want to slay you like the lamb. And he led them. He said he was led to the slaughter like a lamb and kept his mouth shut. Because he knew what the plan of his father was. And some people think that as Christians, we just make all this stuff up. And all of these writers just from different walks of life wrote a book that all comes together and tells us about the salvation of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In, in Genesis chapter 3, they, they killed lambs to cover Adam and Eve. They, they had to sacrifice. Abel killed a lamb. They started sacrificing all the way through. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So he takes the scroll and, and the, 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 the rescue mission is done. How many of y'all believe it's done? Amen. When he's on the cross, what did he shout? It is finished. Not to be continued. There's no other place you go after you die to pay for your sins. Amen. There's nobody going to pray you out of purgatory or hell. Amen. You either get into heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or you go to hell because you reject him. Can we be plain? Amen. But you, I've accepted him. That's why I know if I drop dead, I'm going to be with him. Not because I'm good, but because he's great. Because he's my Lord. Because of what he did. He's my lamb. He's my, my, my sacrifice that took my place. Yes. Next scripture. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Let's just stop for a moment. Every time somebody falls down to worship in the Bible, if it's not God they're worshiping, the angel or somebody says, get up, don't do that. Don't worship me. That's not what you're supposed to be doing because you worship God and only God is who you worship. Amen. So when they fell down before the lamb to worship, it proves that the lamb is God. Amen. God himself took your place on the cross. He became a man so that he could legally continue to bring salvation to the earth and the plan that he has for us. Because even though he's not in time, we are in time. We're part of the time and space continuum. You, you take up so much space and you're living in time. We're all living at the same time. It's called the now. We're living right now. Everyone on this planet is alive right now. I might blow your mind, but we've got to kind of think outside the box. Some of us think we know when we don't really know. And I barely know anything, and I've been studying for a long time. And when I study and find out something I didn't know I was preaching wrong, I want to change it. I want to preach the truth. I love the truth more than anything else, Amen. than being right. You're getting it so far? You're enjoying this this morning? Praise God. Where was I? They fell down and worshipped. Having, each having a harp, that must have sounded pretty cool, and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Y'all know where y'all prayers go? They go before God. He's got them. He's got them. Say he's got my prayers. And he loves it because it's a sweet smelling incense that goes before him. So if you prayed a prayer 20 years ago, he still got it. And when it's all said and done, it's going to come to pass. Next scripture. Amen. And they sang a new song. I love this. They, they, worshiping God. Saying, worthy is, um, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, you were killed, you were, you were sacrificed on the cross. 
and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, and every nation. God's not prejudiced. Red, red, yellow, black, and white. We're all precious in his sight. Amen. He redeems all mankind. Amen. He's worthy. The next scripture. I love this. And have made us kings. He's the king of kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on earth. So finally, the devil is put back under the feet of, of, of us and Jesus, the body of Christ. Because in the garden, we gave him authority when we obeyed the devil instead of God. Do you all know that the Bible says he's the prince of this, he's the God of this world, the prince of the power of the air. He's called a prince in two different places. He's got a title of being, uh, you know, a, a person of authority, the devil. And when he offered Jesus, he said, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the splendor in the kingdoms of this world because they had been given to me. They were given to him by Adam in the garden, by mankind. But now it's no longer. Now we shall reign because Jesus Christ has conquered him. Amen. And you all know what I read at the end of the book? He's going to be thrown in the lake of fire and we're going to live in a place that is called paradise. And your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard and it has not entered into your heart. But God is prepared for those that love him. Do you love him? Amen. Do you love me? Amen. You might not like me, but you got to love me. He says, amen. It might not have been a good place to say amen. To. But listen, kings and priests. So, when, so the, the, the New Testament has no place for priesthood where someone dresses up and stands between you and God. I'm just going to be plain. I know some people say, oh, you don't have to say all that. I've got to tell you the truth. Or I'm not, why am I preaching? You are a priest. Isn't that what it says? Amen. You have made us kings and priests to our God. Peter says in one place, we're a royal priesthood, a kingdom of priests. You have direct access to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the high priest of all priests. And he, he, being he's a man, he, he, is, he says, I have been tempted and I can, in all points just like you so I can sympathize with your weaknesses. That's a priest. Okay? So I, I, I don't have to ask somebody to give me permission to, to come to the table. I'll come to the table because I know who he is. I get my permission from him. Amen. There's a lady in the nursing home, and she was a Protestant. And there was a, a, another religion going through the nursing home serving communion. And he went in, and, and, he, and he said, oh, you're Protestant? Uh, I, can't, you, I, I can't serve you communion. And she said, uh, come here, young man. He came and said, can I see your hand? No, you're not him. Let me see your side. No, that's all right. You need to know him. This is what it's all about. Christianity is following him and whom you know. You shall know the truth and he is the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And whom the son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Are you free? Amen. You could be made free today. Next scripture. And I looked and I heard a voice of many angels around the throne and living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands of thousands. Sounds like a football game. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain, who died on the cross, who, who sacrificed himself to receive riches, wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature, say every creature, in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, same thing it says in Philippians chapter 2, every knee shall bow before the King of kings and Lord of lords. Every, it says every knee in heaven, the same term, in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth, and such as in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Somebody say amen. Do you want to be one of his? Do you know him? 
Are you ready to repent of your sins and say, I want to be forgiven? I believe that there's a lion and a lamb called Jesus who loves me and I want him to forgive me. I'll, you want to be introduced to the lamb today. Because if you say no to the lamb, you'll be introduced to the lion later. And you will bow your knee. You either choose to do it today by your own will. Or you will do it one day because he will command you to. It says every creature will bow. Including me and you.